the Public Health Agency of Canada is partnering with CAMVAX to produce a series of webinar shorts for healthcare providers. These are pre-recorded videos in a format that is quick and digestible in order to fit into your busy schedules. Today's webinar short will be presented in a case-based format that will support healthcare providers in implementing the recommendations of the National Advisory Committee on Immunization. We value your feedback and use information collected to inform us on future webinar products. Please take two minutes after this webinar to complete the evaluation survey. The link can be found in the description on the YouTube page and on the canvax.ca website. A copy of the presentation will be made available on the canvax.ca website as well. On to today's presentation. I would like to welcome Stephanie Elliott, advisor on vaccine confidence with the Public Health Agency of Canada to present on today's topic. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you. Today's webinar is about contraindications to COVID-19 vaccines. At the end of this webinar, you will be able to identify contraindications and precautions to authorize COVID-19 vaccines as defined by the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or NACI. The contraindications discussed in this webinar were defined by NACI. A detailed discussion of contraindications and the rationale is available in their document, Recommendations on the Use of COVID-19 Vaccines, under the Contraindications and Precautions section. There are some important considerations to make when considering vaccine contraindications. COVID-19 vaccine contraindications are specific to the vaccine product. So typically, when one vaccine is contraindicated, another can be offered. Our vaccine supply in Canada does favor mRNA vaccines over viral vector vaccines. So vaccine availability may impact the ability to offer an alternate vaccine. Documentation requirements, such as vaccine passports or mandates, are led by provinces, territories, or employers. So what qualifies an individual for an exemption may be defined by that jurisdiction. In addition to outright contraindications to COVID-19 vaccines, there are precautions that may indicate delaying or avoiding the vaccine for the time being. For individuals who experience myocarditis following vaccination with an mRNA vaccine, subsequent doses should be deferred until more information is available about the safety of giving further doses. It's possible that more information will emerge that indicates that it is safe to administer mRNA vaccines to these individuals, but until that time, they should not be given. People undergoing treatment with monoclonal antibodies or convalescent plasma are not recommended to get the vaccine while undergoing treatment, as it may reduce the effectiveness of the vaccine or of the treatment. Appropriate timing of these products in relation to one another is not well known at this time, and expert clinical opinion should be sought on a case-by-case -case basis. And lastly, those with COVID-19 or other acute illness should defer vaccination until symptoms resolve to avoid transmission of illness in clinic settings and avoid confusing illness symptoms with vaccine side effects. Once recovered from illness, no waiting period is required. People can have severe allergic reactions to COVID-19 vaccines or their components. Anaphylactic reactions to COVID-19 vaccines are rare. As of November 4th, 2021, the rate of anaphylaxis reported in Canada following vaccination with COVID-19 vaccines is 8.5 cases per million doses administered. The potential allergens in COVID-19 vaccines include polyethylene glycol, which is found in mRNA vaccines. This ingredient can also be found in cosmetics, drugs such as cough syrups, medical bowel preparations, such as those used for colonoscopy, or ultrasound gels. Trimethamine is a component in the Moderna vaccine and can be found in contrast media and some oral and parenteral medications. Polysorbate 80 is a component of viral vector vaccines and is present in cosmetics and some medical preparations, such as tablets, oils, and vitamins. 
Severe allergic reactions to vaccine components or the COVID-19 vaccine are no longer considered to be an absolute contraindication to vaccination. Assessment by an allergist or other healthcare provider may allow for these individuals to be safely vaccinated or revaccinated with the same vaccine product. For more information on revaccination after anaphylaxis, please see our webinar on the topic hosted on the canvax.ca website. Some vaccine reactions can mimic allergies, such as vasovagal syncope. These types of reactions are not contraindications to future vaccination. Some allergies warrant a longer observation time. People with suspected but unproven allergies to a COVID-19 vaccine ingredient, such as those mentioned in the previous slide, and people with severe allergies to injectable therapies, such as other vaccines, should be monitored for at least 30 minutes following vaccination, as should people with previous mild to moderate allergic reactions to COVID-19 vaccines. For those individuals, consultation with an allergist may be beneficial. No precautions are needed for people with food, environmental, or other drug allergies. For people with a strong history of severe allergies who may be at higher risk for severe reactions, consider proximity to emergency services when determining their vaccination site. Fortunately, contraindication for COVID-19 vaccines is quite rare, and the only absolute contraindications relate to viral vector vaccines. Those include people with a history of vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia following a previous viral vector vaccine, and capillary leak syndrome. Those with contraindications to viral vector vaccines can be vaccinated with mRNA vaccines. Now for the scenario-based portion of our webinar. Alex is 22 and is looking to get an exemption to his provincial COVID-19 vaccine passport. He has a history of myocarditis associated with a viral illness that he contracted about six years ago. He fully and uneventfully recovered from that illness and he's no longer being followed for cardiac issues. He believes he shouldn't get the vaccine due to the risk of myocarditis associated with mRNA vaccines. So is the vaccine contraindicated for Alex? No, a vaccine is not contraindicated for Alex. People who've had myocarditis with their first dose of an mRNA vaccine should wait to receive a second until more information about safety is available. However, previous myocarditis that is not associated with the vaccine is not a contraindication to vaccination. For the second scenario, Alice has rheumatoid arthritis. She's avoided getting the vaccine so far because she's concerned that stimulating her immune system will flare her autoimmune disease. Her province has a vaccine passport and she needs one to continue with her exercise classes. Is the vaccine contraindicated for Alice? No, a vaccine is not contra contraindicated for Alice. Autoimmune disease is not a contraindication for COVID-19 vaccines. Provide Alice with the best available information on the impact of vaccination on people with autoimmune disease and review the risks that COVID-19 poses to her and her family. For our third scenario, Marguerite was vaccinated with an mRNA vaccine a couple of months ago. 20 minutes following the vaccine, she began to experience difficulty breathing and swelling of the face and mouth. At the clinic, epinephrine was administered and she was transported to the hospital for management of her anaphylaxis. Is the COVID-19 vaccine contraindicated for Marguerite? No, anaphylaxis is not an absolute contraindication to revaccination for Marguerite. People with a history of severe immediate reactions to mRNA vaccines can be safely revaccinated. NASI recommends that you weigh the risks and the benefits of vaccination with Marguerite including her current level of protection from the first shot and the risk of COVID-19 to her and her family, and provide her with informed choice before proceeding. Referral to an allergist or other appropriate physician should be made prior to revaccination. If she does choose to be revaccinated, vaccine administration should be done in a controlled setting with expertise and equipment to manage anaphylaxis. Marguerite should be observed for at least 30 minutes after revaccination, possibly longer if she begins to demonstrate any symptoms of an adverse reaction. Our final scenario is Anoop, who has not been vaccinated against COVID-19. He is seeking a physician exemption from the COVID-19 vaccine to meet requirements at his place of work. He once had a reaction to the laxative Miralax, causing the sudden onset of abdominal pain. 
Miralax contains polyethylene glycol, as do mRNA vaccines. He doesn't know for sure if this was an allergic reaction or something else, but he was told by a previous physician that he should not get vaccinated in case he has an allergy to polyethylene glycol. Are COVID-19 vaccines contraindicated for a noop? No, a vaccine is not contraindicated for a noop. He does not have a confirmed allergy to a vaccine component. And even for individuals with a confirmed immediate allergy to a vaccine component, vaccination is still possible after consulting with an allergist. Discuss with Anoop the risk of vaccination and its benefits, his options for allergy testing, and give him the opportunity to voice his concerns so that he can provide informed consent. That concludes our scenario-based webinar short on contraindications to COVID-19 vaccines. As recommendations are rapidly evolving, in order to stay up to date, consider subscribing to NACI's publication and updates to the Canadian Immunization Guide. Access our healthcare provider toolkit for more information on COVID-19 vaccines for healthcare providers. And continue to tune into our webinars. FAC and our partners have collaborated to provide a host of excellent webinars on foundational and emerging topics on COVID-19 vaccines and updates on recommendations from NACI. Please let us know how you like the shorter scenario-based format by filling in the evaluation survey in the YouTube description. Thank you very much.